What if Earth never orbited the sun? What if, instead of that familiar golden glow each morning, our skies were bathed in a soft, muted orange? Gentle, calming, but strangely unfamiliar. Do you think humanity would still exist? Just imagine this for a moment. You're standing on a different world. Your sun, smaller, dimmer, still shining enough to light your day. The light isn't harsh, but it's not exactly warm either. And the sky, a little redder. Sunsets, lingering, stretching out for what feels like forever. And winter, it might take longer to arrive, but once it does, it stays. A star that could live three times longer than our sun. A star capable of nurturing a civilization for tens of billions of years. Sounds perfect, doesn't it? But here's the real question. Would it truly be a paradise for life? Between G-type stars, like our sun, and K-type stars, their quieter, cooler cousins, which one truly offers the best chance for life? A brilliant star that burns bright but fast? Or a slow-burning, mysterious ember waiting in the dark? Welcome to Astro. Let's begin today's journey by meeting the two main characters of this cosmic story. Before we can figure out which stars are best at nurturing life, we need to meet the two main characters in this cosmic story. Let's start with the G-type star, also known as a yellow dwarf. That's the category our sun belongs to. A star right in the middle of the temperature range. Not too hot, not too cold. G-type stars make up only about 7.6% of the stars in the Milky Way. And like a loyal companion, the sun has warmed Earth for the past 4.6 billion years, providing light, energy, and a safe haven for life to thrive. At surface temperature, around 5,500 degrees Kelvin, radiating that brilliant golden light we see every morning. Its mass? almost exactly the same as our sun's. It's a delicate balance, not too heavy, not too light. And the lifespan of a G-type star? About 10 billion years. A long time, but not forever. Now, let's meet the K-type star, sometimes called the orange dwarf. It's a bit smaller, cooler, and dimmer than a G-type. But here's something fascinating. K-type stars are actually more common, making up about 12% of the stars in our galaxy. Their surface temperatures range from 4 to 5,000 degrees Kelvin, giving off a softer, orange glow compared to the sun's bright yellow. And their lifespans? Astonishing, 30 to 50 billion years. Some estimates even stretch beyond that. If the sun is a brilliant golden candle, then a K-type star is a slow-burning orange flame. Not flashy, but steady. Patient, long-lasting. Now, imagine standing on a planet orbiting a K-type star. The skies might glow with a subtle reddish hue at dusk. Sunsets stretching out longer. Mornings bathed in a gentler, softer light than what we know. A world quieter, more enduring, but also a little more alien. Bright star that burns quickly, or a quieter one that lasts for eons, which offers the better home for life, for civilizations that hope to last billions of years. When we gaze up at the night sky how many of those stars are silently shining, long enough, steady enough, for a planet out there somewhere to begin its own story? To answer that, we need to understand what makes a star capable of nurturing life, and, and what conditions does a planet need to turn that potential into reality?
So what really makes a star a cradle for life? It's not just about light, not just about heat. It's a delicate balance of many factors, like a complex symphony where every note needs to play at just the right time in just the right way. First, there's time. Life doesn't appear overnight. On Earth, it took over 3.5 billion years for simple microbes to evolve into multicellular organisms and millions more to develop into intelligent life. If a star burns out too quickly, that journey gets cut short. A G-type star, like our Sun, lives for about 10 billion years. That sounds like a long time. But right now, the Sun is already halfway through its life, which means Earth has around 5 billion years left before the sun swells into a red giant, scorching everything in its path. A K-type star, on the other hand, but it can live three, even four times longer than the sun, 30 to 50 billion years, a staggering amount of time. Enough time, not just for life to begin, but to grow, evolve, and even recover from catastrophic events. But time is only part of the equation a life-free star also needs a Goldilocks zone, the habitable zone, that's not too hot, not too cold. Region where liquid water can exist. For a G-type star, this zone is wider. That means there's a larger range of safe distances for planets, but it also means planets too close risk being scorched. Well, those too far might freeze. A K-type star's habitable zone is narrower, but it stays stable for much longer. And a lucky planet inside that zone would enjoy softer light and far less ultraviolet radiation compared to our sun. That reduced UV could help preserve a planet's atmosphere and protect DNA from harmful mutations. There's another advantage. K-type stars have fewer flares than smaller stars, like red dwarfs. Stellar flares, those sudden bursts of energy, can strip away atmospheres, destroy ozone layers, and wipe out early life. Fewer flares means a safer environment. It sounds almost ideal. A quiet, steady star. Gentle, long-lived, less dangerous, could this be the perfect kind of star for life? But here's the twist. Is it really as perfect as it seems? But there's a dark side, a secret, hidden beneath the soft, gentle glow of these orange stars. You see, K-type stars may outlive our sun. But that long life comes with a price. Because to live longer, they stay young for much longer too. And in their youth, they're not as calm as they appear today. Scientists call it the saturation phase. A period when young K stars unleash intense storms of radiation. For hundreds of millions of years, they blast their surroundings with X-rays and ultraviolet radiation at levels dozens of times stronger than what our sun emits today. Imagine standing on a young planet orbiting inside the habitable zone of a K star. The sky above, it's not just glowing orange, it's raining down invisible storms of radiation. Relentless, unforgiving, the air you breathe slowly thinning. The atmosphere, the shield that protects life being stripped away layer by layer as stellar winds and radiation tear it apart, oceans evaporating, turning into vapor, drifting away into space. A planet that once seemed perfect, slowly dying, long before life ever had a chance to take root. Some simulations suggest this violent phase could last hundreds of millions of years, far too long for a fragile atmosphere to survive 
and may be too long for life to ever begin, unless the planet is large enough to hold onto its air, unless it has a powerful magnetic field to shield it, unless an ozone layer can rebuild itself fast enough, it risks becoming a barren, lifeless world. A second Mars orbiting an orange sun. Picture it, a cracked, dry planet under a deep orange sky, a dim K-star hanging above like a fading ember. This is the paradox, a star that lives longer, a star that grows quiet and steady over time might still kill every hope for life right from the very start. Does longevity really mean a star is more forgiving to life? Could a slow, quiet sun truly be the paradise we once imagined? A question no one has fully answered. But maybe somewhere out there among the countless silent orange stars scattered across the galaxy, the answer waits. And perhaps we too are just a fragile moment in a universe still writing its cosmic story. Between these two stars, one that burns fast, shining brilliantly, before fading away, and another that smolders quietly, steadily, for tens of billions of years, which would you choose to be your sun? A bright, golden sun, breeding warm, radiant days, but ticking down to its inevitable collapse. Or a soft, orange sun, where sunsets linger longer, the light gentler, and time feels like it could go on forever. But here's the question. Does stability truly mean safety? Or is it just the illusion of fragile peace? Right now, as you gaze up at the night sky, how many of those stars are quietly nurturing worlds with life? And how many have offered the chance for life only to take it away with a sudden burst of radiation or a subtle shift in orbit? Maybe we're searching for something that doesn't exist. A perfect star. A star that never harms the very worlds it warms. But the universe wasn't made to favor life. It moves to its own rhythm. And we, fragile creatures, are simply the outcome of countless cosmic coincidences. Would a civilization orbiting a K-type star have better odds than ours? Or would they, too, face their own invisible barriers? A prolonged radiation phase, a failing magnetic field, an orbit destabilized over millennia? Maybe. The real question isn't which star is better for life, but how far life is willing to go to adapt to the universe's endless changes. And maybe, just maybe, the answer is still waiting for us. Somewhere out there, among the countless twinkling lights,